Okay, good morning class, or I, yeah, I guess it's the morning still, okay. Uh, so what I'm going to want to do is, I'm going to go over a couple talks, again, dealing with retrospective application with a full restatement of your financial statements versus a partial restatement or a prospective um, application, okay. And then we're going to review A21, which I assigned yesterday. And as well as for today's class, I want you to do A21-2, A21-3. A21-3 is very, very similar to what you will see on the exam. Okay. So, first of all, again, just a little recap here. Okay. Now, let's go to page 1492. Or 1491, 1491, 1492. Okay. So, when we look at retrospective application with full restatement, okay, so again, take a look at page 1491. Now, a new accounting policy is applied to events and transactions okay, from the date of origin of each event or transaction. Okay? So, if we have a change of policy halfway through the year, we would make that adjustment fourth half of the year okay. going forward but then we would again we could we'd have to go back and change everything okay now the financial statements for each prior period that are present presented for comparative purposes are restated to reflect the new policy so if we change the policy in our current year okay we're going to have to go and adjust the prior years okay now your opening retained earnings for each comparative period is adjusted for the cumulative effect. Okay, so if you have to go back, I mean, your comparatives are only going to be for two years, so your current year and your prior year, but you might have to go and adjust your retained earnings because if there's more adjustments to be made, you're not going to restate, you know, five years. Okay, you're going to let the reader know what's happened and you'll make the other different changes in your retained earnings. Uh, so all summary financial information for earlier periods uh, such as net income, total assets, EPS are restated as well. Now, with regards to retrospective application, okay, we need to take advantage of making current and future financial information fully comparable with reported results for prior periods. Why? Because it enhances that consistency and comparability. That's key. I mean, we talked about that in Chapter 1. We need to have information that's reliable, consistent, and comparable. Okay? If we don't have that, those statements are garbage. Okay? So that's why if we're making a policy change, we need to go back and restate all the numbers that were affected by that policy change, assuming we have all the information to do so. Okay. Now, In regards to retrospective applications, so we always want to do a full restatement. Now, if you go to page, the bottom of page 1491, or slide 22, you'll see that, yeah, we, we know that we need to do a full restatement. Okay, so let's just look at it this way. We have retro equals... Current, in our current year and our prior years. Okay. Now, we also might have a retro adjustment with a partial restatement. Why would we have a partial restatement? Well, the reason why is often it's impractical impracticable to apply a full retrospective restatement. Okay. Why is it why is it impractical? Well, sometimes it's not possible or it's not feasible to determine the effects of the new policy on the previous period. So as a result we can only do a current year adjustment. Okay. Uh, application will require assumptions about management intent in prior periods. So if they didn't have this assumption or intent 
in a prior period. How can we make that adjustment for those prior periods? And again, you'll be given all this information. Or it's impossible to reliably know what the appropriate measurements and valuation would have been in prior periods. Just because we have it now, you know, it doesn't mean we have to go do a full restatement if we did, wouldn't have had it available then. Okay, so sometimes we would only adjust the current year, again, or parts of uh, their of balance sheet or retained earnings if, if we didn't have all the information. So sometimes we can only do a partial uh, restatement. Okay. So again, it just depends on what's happening. Now, if we can't do a retro restatement, whether it be full or partial, we have to do perspective. Again, this is only related to policy change. If it's an error, we have to do the correction. Okay. And we'll correct as many uh, years as we can. So with a prospective application, partial restatement okay, is not always feasible either. Okay. So if we can't do a full restatement, of the current prior years, and we, we don't even have enough information to do a partial restatement, all we can do is a prospective application and say, okay, from the current year forward, that's all we can do. We can only go forward. Uh, we can't go back. because We just it wasn't available. Okay. So adjustments are made from the start of the current period, and there's no adjustment to restate your opening balance sheet. So we, we got to watch regarding comparability that it's comparable only in the short term. Long run comparisons will be compromised by frequent revisions in accounting standards. So for comparing something 10 years ago, well, the accounting standards may have changed. So it, it's comparability is that great. In the short run, yeah, two, three years, four years, yeah, it, it's good. It's, it's a good base. Okay. But again, but if you're going back a long time, again, there's a number of complicating factors that um, that will be compromised okay, when you're trying to compare year to year to year to year, especially going back to 10 years. Okay, again, why? Because we always have new revised standards. And sometimes these standards might not cause us to restate, so that if we don't have to restate, then our numbers are going to be all messed up okay, for comparative purposes. Now, going to the next slide. Again, this is just dealing with retrospective application. Again, we talked about it. I don't know why. These slides aren't very good for this chapter. They bounce all over the place. Okay. So again, just remember the rules here. When we need to do a retro restatement versus a prospective restatement. And you, you can pick up that up from the rest of the pages, uh, and you'll see that from chapter 21, from 1491 to 1493. But the rules are very simplistic. Again, you always want to hope for a prospective application. One thing you want to restate. Restating is a pain because you have to go and adjust the prior years doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great either at times, especially when you missed on the air. Yeah. All right, so that wraps us up to book chapter, or slide, sorry, slide 28. So what I'd like to do then is go look at uh, question 821. Again, we'll see something like this on the exam. It's going to be more similar to 821.3, but 